That was an interesting one, but I have not found where they are, but I think they have two delegates that were uh, for Obama. <laughs> Keep going, Nick. There we go, 30 PA counties, two states, and let's go next. So last year I introduced a new function of the straw poll where I gave everyone in this room the opportunity to participate. I called it the straw poll live. So with the straw poll live, if you have your mobile device, mobile phone, all you have to do is text Scott R. Davis to 22333. And if you do it right now, it will invite you to join. I think you have to create a, a username or something like that for the first time. Nate, click next. Try to keep up. One more. Actually, go two more. There you go. So even if you did not have an opportunity to vote in the straw poll, you have an opportunity to have your voice counted here. So the first thing, just to kind of test it here, did you complete the official 2008 Pennsylvania straw poll? So the way the live polling works is you simply say A or B. A is yes, B is no. So from your phone, 22333. If you voted, click yes, B, click no. And this gives everyone an opportunity to kind of see how the phone works, see if it works for you, and ultimately gauge some interest. But hey, I like knowing a lot of people voted in the straw poll. All right, let's get into the demographics. Next slide, and let's go to the next one. So in 2018, our age demographics 17 and younger, we only had four people in attendance. 18 to 25, we had 39. 26 to 40, 53. That was the largest segment of people. Um, simple. Next question. Gender identification. I had a lot of people ask questions about this one because they weren't sure how to identify themselves. Uh, I am still very traditional, and I believe uh, male or female. Uh, but I do give you an option for not disclosing it uh, if you wanted to choose something otherwise. Uh, 163 men voted, 93 women, and three people chose other. The top five represented counties, Dolphin County beat out Cumberland this year at 35, Cumberland 30, Allegheny and York both at 17, and Chester came in with 14. Thank you all. Obviously, I'd say this every year after I go through the counties, but if you want to see your county on the list, bring more people with you. Political ideology. There's a lot of fiscal conservatives in the room. Social conservatives right there at 100. Traditionalists, 38. Uh, we had two progressives this year. I think they've already left. Uh, I think the liberals took them out with them, so a total of five. Uh, how many times have you attended the PLC? First time, 79. Two to five, two to five, or two to five. 100, 105. So we had 105 people that came back for their second through fifth year. Obviously, the number 79 is critical. I hope all 79 of you that voted and all of you that this is your first PLC had a great time. There was a ton of great speakers and it's definitely a lot of fun. And I hope to see you next year. How do you, what do you consider more important in an elected official? A willingness to compromise here and there and get things done or adhering to a conservative principles regardless of outcome. Adhering to conservative principles regardless of the outcome, overwhelmingly 166 to 91. And let's go into the Commonwealth results. There we go. Would you say PA legislators are headed in the right direction or going off track? 35 people in the room believe we are going in the right direction. Not sure who they are. 175 of us, we're going the wrong way, and 43 or 43 of us are unsure. What is the most important issue facing the Pennsylvania General Assembly in 2018? 104 overwhelming is budget. 58 pension reform, property tax reform is at 30, voter integrity at 27. Welfare reform 11, privatizing alcohol sales one, and Marcel Shell at nine. We did have some fun write-ins. Uh, well, not really fun, but we had some write-ins. Uh, right to life, abortion, economy, legalization of cannabis. That could be fun. Paycheck protection, school choice, and capital punishment. 
Should the Pennsylvania legislator do, legislature do more to end the practice of sanctuary cities and jurisdictions? Overwhelmingly, 160 say absolutely. We can act on it on a state level. Do you believe that Republicans in the state legislature are standing firm and holding conservative ideals? 144, somewhat. We need more dedicated conservatives in this house. And there's also a lot of no's here. 46 no's, uh, you had 18 absolutely nots. Or actually it was somewhat is 144, absolutely not is 18. It's nice having the high def, these colors really shine. Do you believe the Pennsylvania Supreme Court judges acted within their powers to redraw the congressional map? 158 of us in the room, as expected, want to impeach them all. <laughs> I don't think that would surprise anybody. If the U.S. Senate primary election was held today, who would you choose to elect? Lou Barletta, 167. Jim Christiana, 65. Yell Kearns had 17 write-ins. My friend Michael Gear and I had one as well. Uh, so maybe in a few years, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Michael, I'll see you on the campaign trail. <laughs> All right, let's pull these phones out again. After hearing all of the governor primary candidates today, which is your favorite? Laura A, Paul Mango, B, Scott Wagner, C, Ken D. I wanted to throw this one before the results of the straw poll itself. I saw value in doing it again after hearing all of the candidates speak, but I also want to show everyone the results of the official straw poll as well, but we're going to give it a second. And if you change your mind, you can text again and it does change your answer. So I think overwhelmingly right around that mid 40 mark, we have Scott Wagner. That number matches what happened during this straw poll over the last two days. Scott Wagner, 161. Paul Mango, 66. Laura Ellsworth, 11. Ken, 9. And Mike Kurzweil got two right ends. If the lieutenant governor primary election was today, who would you vote for? Jeff Bartos, A. Kathleen Coder, B. Joseph Gell, C. Peg, D. Diana, E. I did have one error in the Pennsylvania straw poll this year. On this question, I did omit a candidate. I apologize profusely to that candidate. I even took the time to notify the website where I got the information that that candidate was running. So I am omitting those results because it was not accurate. Uh, so this will be the official results once we close this of the Lieutenant Governor primary election for the 2018 straw poll. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go Jeff Bartos. Congratulations. Federal results. What is the most important issue facing the United States in 2018? Government spending, 92. Illegal immigration, 64. Size of government, 49. Healthcare reform, 12. War on terror, 5. Right to life, 21. Federal Reserve policy is eight, and there were six write-ins. Do you approve or disapprove of the job Republicans in Congress are doing? 180 of us agree we do not approve the job they are doing. We have to get our acts together. We have to unify as a party. We have to accomplish something when we have the majority in all three houses. And we have to maintain control of all three houses. Do you approve or disapprove of the job Donald Trump is doing as president? 182 of us approve of the job Trump is doing. 41 disapprove and 34 are undecided. Would you support another candidate for president against incumbent President Trump in 2020? 194, more than 75% of the people that participated will vote Donald Trump. 52, another candidate. 
I didn't specify what candidate. There could be someone really good. I don't know. Do you agree or disagree with Trump's tariffs on steel and aluminum? 130 of us agree, 87 disagree, and 40 of us are unsure. Do you think your child will grow up to be better off than you, about the same or worse than you are? This was kind of an interesting question. For those that know me, uh, for those that don't, I have three children at home. And you know, the goal of every parent is you want your kids to grow up better off than you. And the state of direction we are going, it doesn't look that good. Uh, 109 of us agree. Our children tomorrow are going to be worse off than us. A lot is that this methodology of kicking the can of budget spending down the street. Just, oh, next generation, next generation. Eventually, we have to pay the tab. All right, let's go back into the fun uh, interactive sessions. So there was a lot of great speakers this weekend. I'd like to know who your favorite is. So if you could, instead of an A, B, or C, just text the name of a speaker, and that's going to appear on the screen. I completely agree with that one. You know, if everyone just keeps using the word Scott, it shows up really big. So you got Wagner, uh, you got Davis, <laughs> Perry. Somebody's mom? <laughs> Elmo? All right. See, this gets fun the longer I let it go. <laughs> All right, let's move over to the next one. What was your favorite memory of PLC 2018? Did you enjoy the dinner? Was it this one speaker in particular? Uh, was it just meeting each other, the millennial mixer? All right. Alcohol, drinking, mixer, breakfast, we had bacon. Uh, Scotty, bacon's getting bigger. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, yeah. With that, I do wanna thank you all for participating, for attending the Pennsylvania Leadership Conference this year. Uh, over the last eight years, we have collected 2,225 ballots. Um, and the last thing I want to do is the last slide is obviously, please make sure you save the date. PLC 2019 is April 5th and 6th. Together, let's all celebrate 30 years of PLC. Go ahead, next one, Nate. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again to everyone. Safe travels home.